Greetings. My name is Thomas Beale. I'm the CTO of Ocean Informatics and one of the architects of Open Air. Today I'm going to talk about the ADL Workbench. ADL stands for Archetype Definition Language and the ADL Workbench is a tool for working with archetypes. So we're going to find out how to get started with the ADL Workbench. The first thing you need to do is get some archetypes. And there are various sources where this can be done. Uh, from the openair.org CKM. CKM stands for Clinical Knowledge Manager. It's an online repository for archetypes. Also other CKMs uh, and also the Open Test Archetype Subversion Repository. Let's go and have a look at some of those sources. What you're looking at here is the Open Air uh, Clinical Knowledge Manager can see the URL here, www.openair.org slash knowledge. This repository contains numerous archetypes, a couple of hundred, and you can see archetypes in here uh, by browsing around. What we're concerned about today is obtaining these archetypes for use with the ADL workbench. To do that, go to the archetypes menu, do bulk export, and you can see a number of options there and normally having chosen the options you'll click on this button and download a zip file which you can put onto your normal on your local computer uh, in any convenient location. Here's the Open Air Subversion uh, Knowledge 2 repository you can see the URL there Open Air Domain slash svn slash knowledge2. If we go into the trunk directory we can see uh, archetypes, reference model schemas and terminology. We will use all of those for uh, the ADL workbench so the most useful thing to do is obtain a copy of that trunk directory. That can be done easily in any subversion client tool such as Tortoise SVN uh, from Eclipse and from the equivalent tools on the Mac and uh, Linux uh, platforms. We can have a quick look inside archetypes here and you'll see that there are archetypes for ADL 1.5 testing, all kinds of specific types of testing, uh, SIMI, and there are some examples from Intermountain Health, also EN13606 and some open air examples. Now that we've got ourselves some archetypes, we'll proceed to the next steps. First I'm going to install the workbench, then we'll do some setting up inside the workbench, setting up some profiles, that just means uh, connecting to these archetype repositories that we've obtained, looking at the reference model schemas and some other setup options. Getting the ADL workbench is easy enough. Go to the Open Air homepage download menu and you'll find ADO Workbench and Parser, download and help pages and you'll end up on this page here. That's a useful URL to bookmark. Uh, we have builds for Windows, Mac and Linux available. The current release is, you can see is uh, Beta 8. The release notes are worth looking at if you've got previous uh, installation of the ADO Workbench. If we get the installer same process as you would expect for any normal installer. Having saved the installer, let's go through the process of actually installing it. It's very simple. You'll see a typical installation screen. Put it in a typical place and it's that simple. We won't bother with the release notes because you've just seen them. So let's just watch the tool itself. Now we'll watch the ADO workbench install and set a few of the configuration options on the way. So the first one we need to do is to uh, set the profile, in other words to specify one of the archetype repositories that we've just downloaded. I'm going to call this one CKM and I'll navigate to the uh, location where I save the CKM contents via the method that we saw before. There we have uh, 
CKM 2012 July. We save that and you'll see that we have a repository visualized in that catalog there. Now that the tool's running, we'll do a little bit more setup and then we'll explore the overall structure of the tool. It's a docking uh, tool, so that enables us quite a bit of visual flexibility. There's a few useful uh, general tools like the search tool, uh, the console, error tool, and then of course there are some uh, specific tools for viewing archetypes and classes. Now we'll just have a look, at, a quick look at a couple of important options just to get us going. Under the menu RM schemas, we can actually configure which schemas are being used. These schemas are the reference models on which the archetypes are based. You can have as many reference models in this tool as you like. Uh, as you can see, I've got some of these selected and some not selected. So we've got an open air one there, open air ADL test. There's a SIMI, uh, early version of the SIMI schema and SEN 13606 uh, schema. Each of these schemas, in fact, you can see the inclusion tree of uh, more primitive schemas, more basic schemas, uh, making up uh, the top level, what we think of as the top level schemas. So those schemas can be seen on this part of the tool, which is the schema viewer. We'll go into that in more detail in a moment. Uh, the other thing I want to look at quickly is options. There's all kinds of options for uh, various directories and so on and we'll look at some of these on the way through. However, there's a few key ones which we can set uh, right now. The error reporting level usually makes sense to set it to warning otherwise you're going to see a lot of stuff on the console. You may or may want to set validation strict which means do strict ADL 1.5 compilation. You can set the ADL version for serialized archetypes to 1.4 or 1.5 and there are various um, visual visualization uh, options. You can also set editors to be a particular kind of editor. So for example I might set this editor to be my own favorite editor rather than notepad. Right, now let's have a look around the tool. First of all, let's get ourselves a bit more space so that we can see better. So I'll make the, put the tool into full screen and we'll just pan around a little bit. Uh, as I mentioned earlier on, it's a docking tool. That means that you can have multiple tools all coexisting reasonably happily together. If I click on a class in this tree here, you'll see that it creates a new tool. If I right click on a different class, I can have the tool uh, representing that class in a different tab. I can do drag and drop and show two classes side by side. I can do the same thing with archetypes. And uh, these are just standard docking functions. You'll see that these two tools here, the repository uh, browser and also the reference model browser can be pinned into place depending on whether you want them both or dropped out if you're only working on one particular tool at a time. So that docking structure enables you to do quite a few things uh, flexibly. You can see the console tool down here. Let's just move ourselves so we can see it a bit better can see the console tool down here if I uh, let's just shrink ourselves a little bit if I unpin that that will end up back along the bottom there's an error tool there as well so you can put the console tool into place pin it into place get rid of it as you uh, as as best suits what you're trying to do at the moment So let's go on a little bit further. I'll just get ourselves back up into a reasonable position. 
the first tool that we'll have a look at is the reference model browser. You can see a number of reference models there. So reference models are just the object models on which archetypes and templates are based. We can do some useful things like expand out uh, the packages, have a look at the classes, and generally browse the reference model. If you want to look at a particular class, you might know where it is. For example, the EHR class. You can just click and you'll see it displayed over here. We'll explain this tool here in a minute. It may be that you know there's a class called something but you don't remember where it is. So for example, OpenAir has a class called Observation. I'll just type that into the search panel and you can see that it has navigated to the class so you can see where it is in the package structure. You can also see the class itself in the class tool. It may be that you know that there is a class with a certain name uh, and, and you're not even sure which reference model it's in. So if we were to type the class name entry, we're going to see quite a few possibilities. There's some from the OpenAir model. We can see some from the SEN 13606 model. And if I select that, we can see that it's uh, jumped to the one in the SEN 13606 package structure. We can also edit the source schema. So if we go and choose one of these schemas, we right click, edit source schema, and you'll see uh, that the schema source comes up in an editor. You'll see that the model is written in a very comprehensible logical uh, format. There's an example schema in the Knowledge2 subversion area that we downloaded earlier on and uh, you can hand edit the entire package structure and class definition. You can see properties, ancestors, all the kinds of things you'd expect in an object oriented model. Uh, that means being able to create a schema representing anything, any normal object model, uh, and of course being able to express any of the well-known models such as the SEN 13606 or OpenAir models. This gives us a lot of power so that we can have total control over the view of the reference model seen by archetypes and the tooling infrastructure. And finally, just to continue on that point, the directory uh, from which those schemas are being taken is, as you can see here, it's the program files install area or the equivalent area on a Mac or on a Unix machine, but you can make it uh, into an area of your choosing. So for example, we go to the place where I happen to have it stored. That's the subversion download area of the Knowledge2 subversion area and I would choose that directory there. The schemas uh, in those areas are actually the same as the ones that have been shipped with the tool. The reason why you might change this directory to a local copy rather than the tool install area is so that you can experiment or create new schemas.